Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and I'm going to try to keep this a little brief. Uh, it's Monday night, uh, July 12th. Uh, I, oh, actually it's, actually, it's actually past midnight now, so it's a few minutes past midnight, so that makes it Tuesday, July 13th. I'm way late on this. I had an idea to film this a couple days ago, and I think I just forgot. Uh, luckily, I was going through my notes on my phone, and I saw that I had planned to make this because I have five theories of things we might see in the Loki finale. So there might be some spoilers here. If you haven't watched Loki yet, maybe you want to avoid this episode and just come back after you see the show. But again, these are just theories for the last episode, the finale, but I still might be giving away stuff that happened in the first five episodes that you don't want to hear. So just, you know, keep, keep that in mind. If you continue to listen, you might get some spoilers for the first five episodes. The first one focuses on Owen Wilson's character, whose name is Mobius M. Mobius. Uh, and he is, uh, I would like, for it to where he's just a guy who want, you know once owned a jet ski because that's kind of the thing they alluded to in one of the previous episodes is that he always loved jet skis and he didn't know why and then he even though he doesn't have his memories back he proclaims that he was someone who once owned a jet ski and that may be true maybe he, that is true and that's that's who he is that would be awesome I think because it means he's really no one significant he's just like a random guy and i always like that about the marvel universe is that sometimes these things happen to random everyday people and they're no one really special until they are involved in the stories they're involved in and so i would like for mobius to just be a guy who had his mind erased and is here and he once owned a jet ski that would be awesome but i have a, a theory that possibly what they'll end up doing is maybe make him another loki and the only reason I say that is because in the first few episodes, he actually has a silver tongue and manipulates Loki to do a few things that he wants Loki to do. And that's pretty impressive because Loki's not easily manipulated. Um, he's the guy who constantly lies all the time and he can normally tell when people are lying. Um, he's been tricked once or twice by like Black Widow and a couple other people, Nick Fury in a way, but, uh, but it doesn't happen all the time. So for this TVA agent to be able to do it so easily in, in some regards... It made me think that maybe the show might reveal that he's another Loki. Hopefully I'm wrong. I would love him to be either a regular dude or maybe even a different Asgardian variant, but I'm thinking he might be a Loki variant. All right, so number two is Ravona Renslayer. So that is the judge lady that is on the show. Um, I actually forgot that she's actually a character in the comic books. My friend Nathan mentioned this to me um, not too long ago, so I made a note of it on my phone. She goes by the villain named Terminatrix, uh, and yes, that's a real thing. Uh, and in the comic, she was a daughter of a king, and she was about to get executed by a guy named Baltus, I believe, when Kang the Conqueror showed up and saved her life. And uh, he fell in love with her, Kang the Conqueror, and brought her to, you know, the end of time or whatever to be with her um, outside of the main existence. And then in the real world or in the main world where she was going to die, I think she um, was put in cryostasis on her last breath. So there's still a chance to save her. But in case she never gets saved, Kang created a time rift where he basically saved a version of her. Um, and she stays with Kang at, you know, in this area uh you know at the end of time where she's kind of his princess in a way even though she has that connection to kang though in the comic books um and so does uh, alioth the the big uh, smoke monster which also i forgot was a character in the comic books so my friend nate was like yeah that big smoke monster that's like a, a guardian in one of the comic books and so i went and looked it up and i said oh yeah yeah it totally is uh so uh so i'm thinking even though that alioth though and uh, uh ravona uh, renslayer they have connections to kang I don't think we're going to see Kang on the show. Um, so so I know people are theorizing probably that we're going to see Kang, but I just don't see that happening. Um, I think Ravona, I believe she was honest when she told Sylvie that she was looking for who's behind the timekeepers. So I think that's the mission she's on is she wants to know who's behind it. And maybe she even wants to rule the TVA herself. Um, one of my fears is that uh, either Sylvie or Loki, the main Loki that we're following, uh, the main variant, I fear that, uh, this is my third theory, by the way, that one of them will betray the other one in the finale. And I hope I'm wrong because I really, I kind of want things to work out <laughs> for Loki um, and and Sylvie. I feel like they both had a, a really hard life, uh, lives, multiple lives, and I would like things to work out better for them. I think it's insanely funny and narcissistic that they fall, or at least Loki has fallen in love with Sylvie. I don't know if that she feels the same way back, um, or maybe she does on a small level, but he it seems like he's in love with her. And uh, and that moment was so powerful, it caused a branch to like immediately go to the red zone, right? So, um, so that's something that's unexpected, is one variant falling in love with another variant. But of course, Loki would be that person to do that, because 
I mean, he loves himself. He loves the sound of his own voice. He loves his lies, his tricks. Like, he loves everything about himself. So the fact that he meets another version of himself is uh, is neat. And uh, I think um, what I'm worried about, though, is that one of them is going to betray the other one. I don't think it'll be Loki betraying Sylvie. Because, like I said, I feel like his feelings for her might be stronger than his uh, hers for him. Um, so I hope that she does not betray him. But I feel like that might happen. And I really hope I'm wrong on that one. But I still have a theory that she's going to betray Loki in the final episode and I'm going to end up hating her if she does. My fourth theory, uh, the castle at the end of time. I'm sure many people think it's Doom's castle. I think my friend Nate even thought it was Doom's castle, but I was thinking maybe it was more closer to um, Kang or in the time he was known as Immortus. Um, Immortus is Nathaniel Richards, which is a descendant, I think, of like Dr. Doom and, and one of the Fantastic Four members, I believe. Um, so like, uh, or like, you know, way descendants like he he's like in the year 3999 or something like that like he's way way in the future um and he went by the name immortus and he was actually did good he actually saved the world and brought complete peace i think at one point and then he decided to go outside of time and exist in a place called limbo where he had like a an estate or a castle and, and he kind of existed there for a long time. And then he went back to ancient Egypt and became Rama Tut, and then eventually ended up becoming King the Conqueror. So I'm just thinking that maybe that's Immortus's castle um, that belongs to Kang. But, um, you know, and actually in the comic books, I think it was Avengers Forever number three, I wrote this note down. Uh, Immortus, there's a line where Kang says, Immortus pruned away the chronal branches that were deemed uh, dangerous by others. Um, kind of paraphrasing a little bit there, but uh, but that's what he said about Immortus. So it was Kang talking about the Immortus version of himself. So I'm thinking that maybe we'll see Immortus um, in the castle, um, or at least the castle will belong to him, but I, I'm not so sure we'll see him or Kang. And I'll tell you more about why I think that in my fifth theory, but I'm not think, I'm thinking that's not Doom's castle. I'm thinking it's Immortus's castle. Uh, and last, my last theory is who is in the castle, right? We talked about who, you know, who I think owns the castle, but who's in it? Like I, I said earlier, I don't think Kang is going to be on this show. If you look at every fan theory from WandaVision to Falcon and Winter Soldier, everyone thought someone big was going to appear in the final episode. Now, I think there was supposed to be a cameo or something in WandaVision, but it got changed because of COVID. Um, but still, it wasn't a new character. It was just possibly a Doctor Strange appearance. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, again, they didn't introduce a new character that was that's going to be big to the MCU in the final episode. So I think a lot of times fans build that up in themselves that, oh, the finale is going to be like this big, we're going to get this character reveal, we're going to see Kang, and um, I don't think so. I think Kang is going to be properly introduced in Ant-Man 3, the Ant-Man and Wasp uh, third movie with them. I think he'll be introduced in that probably properly, and we're not going to see any of that um, here. I think this is all set up stuff that we can that when Kang references oh I used to run the TVA or I lived at the end of time I think he can say that and people who watched this show it'll make more sense to them you know um, but I don't think we'll physically see Kang um, or Immortus or his version as Immortus I don't think we'll see any of them in this what I do think we're going to get though is I think we're going to see King Loki in charge of that castle I think when we get there we're just going to see another Loki variant sitting on the throne all alone by himself. Um, I was thinking that I really liked Richard E. Grant as old, old man Loki um, in the previous episodes, and I really liked his whole thing about how he went to another planet and he sat there in isolation, and then he got, he wondered whatever happened to his brother and his friends and, you know, people in Asgard, so he went out to look for them, and that caused him to be captured by the TVA. I always liked that. I, when, I, when he told that story in that episode, I was like, oh, I really like that. I like hearing his story and boastful Loki story and uh, kid Loki story and the, the alligator uh, Loki story um, and the little cameo of Throg, you know, the Thor frog. Um, I liked all that, um, but it started making me think about our Loki, the main Loki. And I thought, you know, he's on this mission when he started to take over the TVA, um, but he's not really succeeding at that. Now he has a new mission to fall in love with Sylvie and create some new life somewhere outside of time with Sylvie, um, which is kind of his new focus. Um, so what happens if he didn't fall in love with Sylvie? Would he have ever taken over the TVA? So if this Loki didn't take over the TVA, is there a variant that showed up at the TVA that succeeded? And maybe the, the TVA maybe did exist at some point, and whoever was running it was taken over by Loki. And so now at this castle, we have 
King Loki sitting there on the throne, um, you know, observing time or whatever. I just, I don't know, I was thinking about that and it made me think of this, that maybe at the end of here we're going to get into the castle and we're just going to see a Loki that succeeded um, where other Lokis who have tried to take over the TVA have failed and maybe now he's stuck here and and, I'm, and I don't know what his motivations are and all that stuff uh, yet. I'll wait to let the show tell me that, but I just don't have this big grand theory that it's going to be introduce Kang the Conqueror or anything like that. Like, I'm sure there's references to Amortis and Kang, possibly, but I just don't see them revealing that actor and that character in this show. But having another version of Loki, that means something to the characters. Like, if Kang was there, that doesn't really do anything. Like, I think a lot of times people don't think about it from a writing standpoint. Like, you need something to matter in the finale to the characters, to their journey. And seeing Kang and being introduced to a, a random guy like Kang would mean nothing to either of them so I don't see it happening but them getting to the end and seeing like a Sylvie on the throne or a Loki on the throne um, I think that would have more ramifications for the characters and so um, so that's what I think we're going to see at the end but thanks for hanging out with me and listening to these theories I started coming up with these theories like many of you after each episode and a couple of the ones I've had that were right like after episode two I predicted that the uh, timekeepers were not even real uh, because I was getting a very um, uh, Wizard of Oz vibe, uh, you know, from from everything, like the way the movie, sh uh, the show is shot, and like the the way when Loki comes out and sees the city, it kind of reminded me of Emerald City a little bit, um, just like this big thing, and that they, they have this big purpose, but no one really can answer specifically. Like they say, oh, we're just here to protect a, a timeline, so it sounds simple. But everyone just kind of doing these menial nine to five, uh, you know, uh, desk jobs, uh, which is awesome. I think that's a really great thing about the show. So it, it seems like it's not um, like there's not something big going on there. And that kind of made me think of Emerald City. But then I was like, oh, but also no one has really seen the timekeepers except uh, Ravona and a couple of her guards. Um, but other than that, as far as we know, no one has seen the timekeepers. Even Mobius, one of their best agents, hasn't seen the timekeepers. Um, so once I heard those characters say that, it made me think of Wizard of Oz even more and go, oh, okay, yeah, so so the timekeepers aren't real. They're just the Wizard of Oz, and there's someone behind it. Uh, so I, I kind of predicted that early on, and I'm sure other people have too, but I have stayed away from other people's theories. I just talk about this stuff at, uh, at work with people, and I kind of keep my theories to talking to them, and they share some of their theories with me, um, and we just kind of have fun talking about it at work. But I haven't really been online to see other people's theories so if I some of the ones I have here if other people have said those too which I'm sure they have uh, let me know down below and if you've had some of these theories uh, let me know down below as well or if this airs after the episode or whatever comes out uh, then feel free to just roast me down below for all the theories that I get wrong because I'm sure I'm wrong on some of these uh, but it's just fun to theorize and like I said I try to temper my expectations I don't try to theorize things that I see I think are not possible for the show to do like of course you could bring in Kang but again I don't think it makes sense to and therefore I don't think it's possible to really do because why do it it's we're going to get Kang coming up in a movie soon anyway and I love Kang personally so I'm excited for that but throwing him in here I don't think it would matter to the characters so uh so that's where my theories come from is I try to think of what makes sense uh for for the story uh, but again, I could be wrong. So, you know, if so, roast me down below for all the ones that I'm wrong about. Uh, and that's it for today. So thank you all for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.